Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And we bring you this match in progress right now from the one loss side. Day two of the 25th annual Andy Mercer Memorial Nine Ball Tournament here. Streaming live from the Rum Runner Lounge in Las Vegas on 1801 Tropicana Avenue. And we are in for a treat right now. We have the Honorable Stefano Palinga with us today. And, you know, it's just, a, it's just a great honor to see him. And here he is. Say hi. <laughs> hey, guys. How are you? Good to see you. Good to be here with you, Daniel. Yes. Thank it's, you for the invite. It's, it's for great the invite. to Thank finally you. have some time with you in our uh, commentary booth on POV Pool. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And uh, thanks for joining us to watch some of these matches. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. We have actually Lee Harvey and John Lalo right now mm -hmm. are playing each other. And do you are you familiar with John or Lee Harvey? Uh, I've seen them before. I think they're local players, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Well, they John Lalo's from Vegas. Ventura, California. Oh, Ventura. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But we also have on. So, uh, yep, yes. that's John Lalo. That's John, yeah. yeah and current it. score right now is three to one in a mm -hmm. race to six. Okay. It's gonna and shoot this last. Oh, you already did. Okay. The, yeah. This is the live. Uh, that's the live this camera. Yeah. Camera. Okay. Good. And Lee Harvey is racking right now. Mm -hmm. Now it's the loser racks. racks. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen that for a while, have we? That's right. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I see the magic rack, which is a great item. I yes. like that a lot. Yeah. Magic rack. And now it's funny, it's you know, people out there may know you traditionally as a billiard player or an artistic billiards like champion. Trick shots, of course. Yeah. yeah. But uh, one thing I found out very interesting about you is that you were a straight pool player back in the day, weren't you? Oh yeah, many years ago. That's how I started. You know, I started by playing straight pool. I was uh, 12 when I started to play pool. By the time I I turned 18, 19, I I got so, to be fairly good. And then there in Europe, it was hard for me to find a game. I was uh, already running, you know, three, four, five racks. You know, it was pretty good back there. You know, there were not, you know, guys like, you know, um, um, uh, Ralph Suke around yet, you know, or uh, or Orkman or, you know, mm -hmm. those uh, those monsters that later came out, you know. So and that was one of the reasons why I switched to trick shots. You know, I just uh, couldn't find an opponent. I couldn't find a good game, you know, okay. straight pool. So, you know, my highest run was, by the way, 179, which was very outrageous, you know, in Europe back in the early 80s. Sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, Moscone was credited for, for 526. 526, correct. Yeah, yeah. 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 And well, uh, Moscone was one of your idols back then. Well, I mean, definitely, definitely. Unfortunately, I never got to meet him because there was a consistent difference in age. Yeah. You know, and uh, by the time I was playing pool, he, he had quit already. He was, uh, you know, his health didn't allow him to, to play much longer, Yeah. unfortunately. But he was one of my idols, that's for sure. And, uh, and uh, what I share with him, and uh, it's been a huge honor for me, is to be uh, a Hall of Famer in the National Italian uh, Sports Hall of Fame. You know, so yes, they and you're actually me. the only other pool player Correct. to be inducted into the uh, Italian American exactly. it's just me and Willie, Sports Hall uh, of yeah. Fame. Along with legends like uh, Mario Andretti, you know, Mario Andretti, exactly, you know, or Joe DiMaggio, or uh -huh. uh, Rocky Marciano. I mean. Uh, it was a, a huge honor for me to be considered at their level. And so that, that's a nice thing that I share with Willie. Well, and likewise, this is why I tell people that it's a huge honor for us as well, you know, to have oh, you well, here. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, I'm glad to, you know, yeah. you're doing a great job, Daniel. And I appreciate, you know, this, uh, there should be more Daniel Bushes, you know, I mean, uh, around, you know, so that <laughs> probably, probably pool would be doing better. Thank you yeah, so much. Be more uh, popular. Oh, your flattery will get you everywhere, Stefano. Oh. <laughs> so sure. you you came real to real fame in the United States as a mm -hmm. as an artistic billiards champion. Yeah. And that was thanks to that very fortunate program Trickshot Magic. Yes. That started to be aired on the ESPN in the year 2000. And uh, uh, me and Mike Messi were uh, ending up in the finals very often, so we had a huge exposure on TV with great ratings. Maybe the highest ratings, ratings ever recorded, you know, for a, a 
pool. Yeah. And uh, it was a great experience. You know, it lasted solid 11, 12 years for me and Mike. Then we decided to quit. Things were changing and uh, um, getting a little bit out of hand, in our opinion. Uh, not as pure as they used to be. And uh, mm. we both, uh, you know, well, I'll talk to myself, you know, for myself. And I, yeah. I decided to quit. Then I yeah, I noticed, I noticed that. Now, did that have, have to do... I think I read somewhere that it had to do with something about double hitting the cue ball or yeah, shot selections and rules you know I've always uh, been uh, in favor of the old rule of uh, one stroke of the cue through the cue ball and yeah. then slowly we lost that you know and then uh, we started to see some uh, funny looking um, also props yeah I mean, I mean I've seen pool. like I mean, guys you know you even you participating shooting oh yeah. into hoops and targets and <laughs> oh yeah yeah all kinds of things you know yeah i mean revolving yeah. racks and uh, or, or cones or rubber balls yeah, I mean, bouncing yeah. balls i mean yeah. it's really not pool i mean at that yeah. point it's more of a circus act i think using uh four cues six cues right yeah. as if it happens every day right we go to a pool room you know and we have to jump six balls uh, you know all at once i i, I don't agree with that i'm sorry you know, sure. you know it's, it's it's good for the show you know, and there are some really yeah. talented kids out there that have been uh, great. We all know them. We are all familiar with, with, with yeah. Florian, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and a few others, you know, great talents. He's a tremendous talent. Uh, but, uh, you know, I would keep it, you know, pure if I yeah. could, you know, yeah. Okay. So you're, what That's you're saying point. is you're a purist. Sure. And, yep. uh, but, you know, that deserves a lot of respect and demands a lot of respect, actually. Yeah, if you, you, you know, know, if you won't grant me respect, you know, I will take it. You know, yeah. I, I like that. You know, <laughs> that, yeah, that, but definitely, yeah. Me and Mike Messi were on uh, on a different uh, page, you know, than yeah. those um, mm -hmm. younger upcoming players. You know, that you know wanted to enforce. You know, me and Mike are getting older. You know, we can't run around the table like uh, like nutcases. You know, like uh, chasing <laughs> balls or, or tossing balls at each other. Sure. You know, wearing helmets because he got at some point he got even uh, a little. Uh, you know, or dangerous, you know, to Wait a minute. hang around. I didn't know. know helmets uh, were ever incorporated into this show. Unfortunately, <laughs> they were not, you know, but we were taking chances. You <laughs> oh, know, but you I, may I have sure needed one. There were liability, you know, yeah. involved because, you know, there were balls flying all over the table, I you know, see. with some crazy shots. And yeah. uh, at, at a couple of times we had to dock, you know, yeah. a couple of flying balls, you know, they, you know, it's, that, that was not the right thing to see on TV. I, I, can, only, uh, I can only imagine the, uh, also the incredible challenge for those producing the shows because of the oh, yeah. uh, you know the the low percentage shots that you had to come up with and yep. then maybe have to reshoot and, and maybe rethink some of the oh, yeah. some of the shot routines is that, that was correct part of the problem correct? exactly yeah. it was part of the problem <laughs> do we have yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well your yeah, fans yeah. are visiting you you got yeah that, that's <laughs> a nice uh, crowd that i see yeah, you know, yeah. beautiful uh, so you 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 are uh, I, you know i just want to embrace you also because sure. we're working with Tiger. Uh, oh, they're, yeah. they're uh, you know, Tiger products, awesome products, have uh, sponsored uh, POV Pool for this event. And, uh, you know, you're they a proud, right uh, you, you, you had actually said that your game started improving dramatically when you started using Tiger. It did, it did, you know, yeah. And actually, you know, at one time I was sponsored by, by Tony, you know, the owner of Tiger. Tiger products, you know, um, and once, uh, you know, the, the sponsorship expired, I kept using their products because I, I just found them to be among the, the very best in the market, you know, available, you know, yeah. and so there was nothing that uh, uh, tied me anymore, you know, to, uh, you know, having to use their products, you know, mandatorily, so I just chose to use Tiger products because they, they're extremely reliable. Yeah. And uh, yeah, my, my quality of my game uh, improved quite a bit. That's yeah, great. That's, that's great. We have also a chat room. I if see. anybody, if anybody has any questions in the chat room for uh, Stefano Palinga, you know we'd be happy. He's he's here in the flesh right now. So <laughs> if you if you have any, if you're curious or have any unanswered questions that you might have had for years about Stefano, he's here. Now you're not. Uh, oh hi. <laughs> it's oh, Mike I, Massey. I, I think I, I've seen this guy before. Who's that? I think I met, I met you one time. You arrested me in, in Italy one time. That is I mean, so right. Yeah. That is so right. Yeah, you remember he, that he episode? Put, yeah, he yeah, almost put me in jail, but then he, <laughs> then he found out I was a friend of the Pope, and he let me go. That's it. I have to let you go, Mike. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's such a that's pleasure a to see Mike. Mike Massey is one of my mentors, by the way. Let me say that. You know, yeah. 
I always, um, you know, yeah, like that's, Mike. That's, and, that's yeah. my, my Tesla skies right here. Eh? Yeah. yeah, well, thank you, Mike. Yeah. We had a lot of fun, didn't we? Oh, a lot for of a fun while, for many right? years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just said, you know. About I got a good idea. Would you like to sit with uh, Stefano and, yeah, and just kind of, yeah, yeah. you know, okay. Can I have get, my coffee too? You can have your coffee. Do you want some coffee, Oh, no, Stefano? I'm fine. No, I'm, I'm okay. fine. I'm totally right. fine. Yeah, I see there is somebody that says, uh, hi to you, Mike. You know, Tennessee Tarzan. They remember yeah. your nickname. Yeah. Yeah, Tennessee Tarzan. That's Tell it. us about the nickname Tennessee Tarzan. To me? Oh, yeah. Well, I used to. Uh, I used. To, you know, I'm pretty strong. You know, I, I bench pressed 420 uh, uh -huh. two years ago. You know, and uh, I used to arm wrestle and stuff. And I used to bet I could do more one arm push ups than anybody could do with two arms. I never lost. And uh, extended push ups where your arms straight out in front of you. And most I ever had to do was a gymnast jumped up and they did Pretty 60 scary. with two hands or 62. <laughs> I did 63 the most I ever did with one arm, you know. And uh, But I was a brick mason, block mason one time, and I got, my father was strong, so I had natural mm -hmm. strength, you know, in this. And, uh, and, uh, but and when I was young, What's that? he was a firefighter for a few years, yeah, you know. Fireman, fireman for five years, but when I was a hustler on the road and stuff, I might look a little bit like a young Johnny Wisemiller when I, on my healthy days, <laughs> but I was, I was skinny. I was thin, but I was always, I always had strong arms, you know, like strong arm John. You know, strong arm John. He sounds familiar to me. Yeah, he's a he's he's an arm he arm wrestles, oh, but okay. anyway, he's a good good poop player. Plays good on the bar table and stuff. You know, George Breedlove's friend. He he. Uh, I he's seen him lately, but he's a uh, George. Uh, he married Jeanette Lee, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. George, George, great player. You know, George, George Bree loves. Uh, I mean, he plays plays really good. Yeah. Stefano, uh, before I, I leave you guys to it, w would you like to tell us how we can get a hold of you or where we can find you and, and what we can expect from you in the future, in the near future? Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, well, I have it. Uh, you know, as you know, you know, I shared it with you earlier. You know, I've had some. Uh, serious health issues you know lately but uh, everything is uh, has been fixed and good. i'm almost all good to go so yeah. i had to take unfortunately a forced period of uh, absence you know from pool you know that lasted several months now i'm trying to get back in shape but uh, whoever wants to contact me by the way i'll be in the philadelphia area for the super billiards expo uh, next month i have my website you know it's a very old website you know it's been stefanopelinga.com www.stefanopelinga.com or uh, they can contact me anytime, you know, through Facebook as well. You know, I have a, okay. a pretty popular a couple of pages there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. thank you for mentioning that, Daniel. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I think it's very important that, you know, now at this day and age, everybody should know how to get to, you know, sure. get a hold of Stefano oh. Palinga and, and, and MikeMassey.com. Or do you have uh, any sort of way that we get in touch with you, Mike? Uh, well, uh, yeah, Mike Massey or Mike Trick Shots at Gmail dot com is my uh, email address. I don't, we have a website, but it's SureStrokeTool dot com, mm. and it's a it's a device I came up with to practice to teach you how to hit center ball. You know, we have a website there, and it's I tell you, it's, it's helped my game. It makes you focus and everything, and it's uh, it's pretty amazing. You know, and we just got to get it out there. It's it it. Teaches you exactly where center ball is, and I tell you what, most poop players, I, it's amazing that when you learn how to use center ball. See, I just started a few years ago using center ball a lot. It's really, yeah, really. I was always a, a you know spun my cue ball a lot and everything and stuff. But if you get, Boy, we're we're always learning, aren't we? If you get. If you look at the snooker players, see they have to use center. They they use they use very only time they use. I was going to mention snooker. Okay, the only time they use spin is when the ball is maybe close to a pocket that they can spin the ball to go around. But it's all center stun for it. When you hit the ball center, the cue ball is going to go straight. If you lots of shots are missed because unwanted English. If you shoot a long shot, you think you hit in the center and you're off maybe a half a tip or something like that, the cue ball's going to deflect, so the time the cue ball gets to the end of the table, you could be a half inch or, well, you know, so a lot of shots are missed because people think they're hitting the center and they're not. So, uh, and, and, but once you know where center is and learn how to use center, 
uh, like I use the ghost ball system a lot and stuff at the time and 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 center you know not using so much English just a little bit of English and playing more natural angles maybe. yeah yeah I, the, game, the game can be so simple if you play if you play right patterns and stuff you know Stefano you were gonna say something about it. I saw I saw you having a little revelation right no I, absolutely but Mike uh, you know I did uh, I, I did try that you know a device that Mike uh, came up with you know and it works really well you know it's so inexpensive and it makes uh, you know really $20 $20 with the it's sure sure stroke tool.com yeah. we need to say I tell you what we start settling a lot of these we're gonna put some money back into tournaments and stuff and everything that's funny I was just gonna I was just gonna ask you for a $20 lesson <laughs> But maybe I'll just <laughs> maybe I'll right, just get this right. Yeah, and you know, have you seen what I came up with instead? You know, I actually, it's been very recent. I think that Mueller already has it, and then uh, Ozone Billiards, a few others. You know, Pool Dog, you know, carry that new item. You know, I came up with a a, a shield. It's called Cloth Shield. There's small ah. squares of a very special plastic, see-through plastic, extremely thin, yeah. kind of like you know the Magic Rack. Mm -hmm that can be pierced through you can shoot all the masse shots all the jump shots or anything you know yeah without piercing you know or, and without damaging the cloth at all yeah, well, we need something like that yeah, because yeah. that way rooms people can practice the Correct. shots and stuff no, yeah. yeah it's on my website and uh, you know they did you know i think it retails for 12.95 i believe you know yeah it's uh, i tell you what I'm going to leave you guys to it. You, you guys are all, I can tell you're old friends, and you, you, you could probably go on forever. So I'm going to put a match on the, on the screen, and uh, feel free to just chat amongst yourselves for a bit. And if there's any questions in the chat room, I'll, I'll, I'll whisper them to you, okay? Sure. Okay, which match are you going to put on the screen? Uh, uh, just a second. Right now, it'll still be... You want us to do a little commentary on Sure. That? Why not? We're going to have John Lalo... And Lee Harvey are playing each other on this table. So if you want, you, it's over now, I think. no, it, it's still it's full. You're right. It's five one, but uh, there will be another one. Okay, and I'll let you know who they are. Mm -hmm. okay. And that'd be the statement. Yeah, you can see it. Good. Yeah. And thanks to you guys, I appreciate this. Oh, thank you, Daniel. We appreciate. Everybody appreciates this. Thank you. Let's get a seat for you, Mike. Oh. You want a chair or a stool? That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I can move over. Yeah. No? Sure. Uh, sure. Just make sure the microphone is off, right? It's on. Nice and close. Is it on? Yeah. Right now? Oh, okay. Good. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I can't curse. What's that? I can't curse. The mic's no. on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Score is five. Five one. I appreciate it. Yeah. And he's got five. No, he's got one. He's got one. What are we looking at? Uh, uh, he can kick it and come back around toward the center of the table here. He can go real first. Oh, it's a four ball. Man, ball. I didn't yeah. see that. I thought there was one ball hanging in the pocket. I know. These <laughs> new balls, you know, with those colors, you know, they're a little yeah. unusual. They're well, I should have known it wasn't a one ball with five balls on the table, you know. I just yeah. So it's uh, yeah. five. Game over. And that's, it's 5-2 uh, now. 5-2. Mm -hmm. And I don't know really how either one of these guys play. Well, this, this, guy, this guy here, I think, is... Uh, they're using those Cyclops balls, eh, Mike? Yeah. Cyclops, You know, okay. I, I like them. They're, 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 Do you? Yeah, I, well, eh, I won, a tournament, I won a tournament using them last year. You know? well, what about trick shots? You know, Do you think they, they well, grab the, ball, the way they, they, they grab should, different. Or? The cue the ball, it does react different. Uh, it does, yep. yep. And you got to get used that. to it. I don't know if it compresses more. Or, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know, but it does react mm -hmm, different, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. And uh, it would be hard for a player... If you haven't used them to try to play in the tournament stuff, you know, because it, it, it reacts different on your right, stuff. Right, 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 yeah. Because I know in my match, I don't know, you probably didn't see it, but my match, I almost scratched on a shot, and there's, I didn't think the cue ball would even get close to the corner pocket, you know. On, Is on that right? Shot. You kept rolling yeah. instead? Well, it, it went through the ball more instead of oh, I see. the way the tangent line was lined up and stuff. I cut it in, I figured I was going to hit like a diamond up from the corner. I see. And I almost crashed in the corner pocket, you know, and then uh, and as I had a long shot. it was heavier than you would expect. Yeah, it's and sort it's, of it's a the weight, but the weight, it's not the weight of the ball. It's not right, it's, right, yeah. yeah. It can't be the weight. I mean, yeah, it's got to be. 
what do we get there now? It's um, another nine ball tournament. Oh, a nine ball. Oh, Matai Oh, open. the Matai Open. Oh, yeah. Jimmy, I just uh, saw Jimmy the other day. He yeah, said he Jimmy. was working on this project. Oh, with, man, uh, that's great. With, with Jimmy, Gino, the owner of, uh, of this beautiful establishment, you know, of the Rum Runner. Oh, yeah. So, when, is, when is this? Uh, is there any date? I don't see any date. No, no date. <laughs> well, yeah, Jimmy Mataya plays out of. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. We got a good shot of that poster. Run, run. This is real cool. Oh, to be the date's going to be determined. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, let me tell you about a, a Mataya tournament. Would y'all like to hear about a Mataya tournament? I had a sure, nine, okay. I had a nine ball tournament two years in Chattanooga. It's back before they hadn't in hotels that much, and we had one. It's called the Mike Massey Open. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jim Mattia came, and uh, he had his own tournament, a side event with my event. And they called it the Mattia Open. And what it was, <laughs> it was the Mattia Champagne Open. It was a race to one, no entry fee. He put up $1,000, no entry fee. Mm -hmm. The winner, winner take all, $1,000. Oh, okay. okay. But before you pocketed the nine, it was a race to one, you had to drink a glass of champagne. Are you okay. serious? I'm serious. You had to drink a glass of champagne. Now, when you got to the finals, you had to have. It was a race to three, so you had to drink three glasses of champagne before before you pocket the oh, right? I'm, I'm so sure that me and Jimmy like that format. So it got to the finals. It got to the finals as Bushwhacker. You remember Bushwhacker? You know. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. David Howard was in the finals. Okay. And Bushwhacker David. was playing really. Gary Nolan was playing really good. And then it got down to he's uh, he's pocketing a nine ball to win the tournament, and the champagne hit him, and he was blinded. He couldn't even stand up. Oh boy! Yeah. So then uh, David Howard won it, and he yes, put it on his resume. The Mike, me. the the Jim Mattia, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, champagne open. <laughs> yeah, he's got it on his resume. I noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> I think there is somebody that wants to ask you a question. I see. Somebody can uh, ask me a question. What? Oh, by the way, um, Don Mark says hi. Hey John, how you doing, buddy? Don oh Don, oh Don, oh the monk. Hey the monk, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, high pool players six nine one. I guess I can't uh, quite read it, but uh, you know, thanks for following us. I'll let you know when yeah. I see something. Okay, if you say a question. Yeah. Hello, yeah. Lee Brett. How are you, Lee? Well, here Where are you at now? <laughs> Lee Brett is writing to us, you see. Yeah, this this guy here, he's uh, straight in on the six, so he might draw back a little bit or just stop there. Mm-hmm. Oh, don't get jacked up. Okay. Now he's got options here. He can use a little reverse and go down straight back up, or he can go two rails and come back around for the side pocket. See yeah, what well, angle you there. know, to go around the nine, you got to be pretty confident with the. Yeah, I think he used. It's Gordon. He used a little riding. It's probably easier. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he oh, went no, around he, it. He yeah. did. He did. That, well, it's hard to see from the here. Hard the way angle. and uh, pretty good shape actually. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a little bit of an angle. I yeah, like the way these tables play. It's, it's you can use a lot of finesse and just play natural no, angle. Sure, sure. And, you know, speed. It get it comes down to speed control. Correct. Yeah. Kind of like you, playing billiards, Mike. Yeah. You know the three cushion. Yeah. You know that we like so much. If your nerves are right, you go. If your nerves is right and you're playing good, it's, it gets down to speed control. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Well, Mike. Yeah. Good shape on the nine, of course. You know, and now What's it should that? be easy. Do you remember the Little Sisters in Little Rock <laughs> and Finger Pool? Little Sisters in Little Rock. Uh, I don't know. I, I, you know, Little Rock used to be my stomping grounds. I uh, I actually lived there for six months uh, after I got out of the military. I was on the road, uh, Calvin Harcrow, and a very good friend of mine was, was uh, Bob Graves. Uh, he was kind of like a big brother to me there. And then now I'm talking about when I was like 20 years old. But later on, uh, yeah, I went through there and did some shows and stuff uh, in Little Rock. Uh, 
uh, and of course I do the finger poo everywhere I go, you know, so it's hard to remember all the places, but uh, that sounds familiar, so I haven't been to Little Rock in a long time. Somebody, somebody out there listening, get me some shows there and I'll come by and see you. <laughs> Stefano will come with me too. If, if, if the money's right, right, Stefano? Sure, anytime. But, yeah, just put us up in a Motel 6 and feed us good. <laughs> oh, Mike, we've done things for free, you know, for the love of the game so many yeah. times. You know, I mean, uh, we're not after the money necessarily all the time. So, yeah, we're on. You got a good heart, Mike. Now we're on Deborah Aarons and John Kutcher. Yeah, and... Um, yeah. Oh, John. Uh, John won the first game there, I guess, right? John made it, yeah. Oh, wait, what, what's the score? 5 3. Oh, he's losing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. John's John losing is, over there. Uh, John is a good friend, you know. He's a uh, yeah. co owner of Bull Sharks, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he, he loves a, the game, him and yeah. Joe. Yeah, uh, the landmark partner. In, uh, in, um, yeah, Las Lou Batura used to have that. Correct, yeah. And then before Lou, yeah, uh, the place been there a long time. Yeah. That's right, yep. Yeah. Hall of Famer Lou. Hopefully Lou is doing well, you know, and uh, I'm sure you will Yeah, his too. son's here, you know, Sal. Sal, I didn't see him. Sal's a good player. He's uh, He's got a pool room over there. You know, Sal's a, okay. Sal's a really well, nice hopefully guy. I'll run into him later, too. Yeah. You know, I want to yeah, find out about yeah. his dad. You know, he's uh, yeah, such Lou, a legendary Lou, Oh, man, Lou is such a great player. I mean, straight pool. He could put 100 balls on you so fast. He's playing straight <laughs> pool that you... He, oh, sure he did. Yeah. yeah. He was the fastest player in his era the mm -hmm. you know playing and he just and he ma but he, he he shot me he didn't play safer he's shot maker you know he did yep. nine ball yep nine ball too he would just get up there and he put five yep. racks on me so uh, one time so quick uh, <laughs> uh i didn't even uh, you know he, he just boom 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 boom, boom. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. there's only one that player that i've seen that played faster i believe than 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 lou when he was playing, when playing his natural speed. What Orkman? No, Luke Salvas. Luke Salvas. Oh, Luke Salvas. Luke Salvas. Yeah. Luke, Luke Salvas. Is fast. That's right. Sometimes it looks like he hits it before the cue ball stops. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and he looks like the cue ball. He hits it and lets the cue ball just go where it wants to go. But he, he, no, he's not. He, and he's a good mm -hmm. player. You know. Oh yeah. Luke is he a He won that player. speed pool like three times. Oh stuff, yeah. You know, but that's his speed. I mean, exactly. He, he, that's definitely his racket. Yeah. And he's a he's a great yeah. you know shot maker and a yeah. nice guy. Yeah. Well, Lou was um, I think Lou at one time you know ran 150 balls in a tournament you know in 21 minutes 150 and out. Yep. In 21 minutes. 20, 21, 22 minutes. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's pretty impressive for. Um, and of course, anyway. over in in England, you got you've had a few really fast players. Uh, uh, one of the greatest players of all time, that's players, of course, uh, is uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Oh, by the way. Oh, he, yeah. ran, uh, by far. he ran a maximum break in like four minutes and something or five minutes. Unbelievable. Then, uh, 418. Four, yeah. And then uh, Jimmy White was always a real mm -hmm. fast player. And But the fastest, probably the natural player, was too, was Watana. Watana was a fast player. He's from, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, uh, Thai, uh, that's right. uh, uh, but Thailand. Uh, but Drago. Oh, Tony. Tony yep. Drake, and he Tony, still Tony. Play, he plays good pool, and he yeah. plays, you know, he's got a really good rhythm, and uh, yep. you look Tony at something, Moscone was a pretty fast play, you know, Moscone, he had a good rhythm, he, he yeah. had a good, yeah. pretty good rhythm, and so did um, Dallas West, Earl, Earl plays, oh, Earl. you know, oh yeah, yeah. yep, and uh, then you, your women players, you got, Jimmy uh, Karras was pretty fast too, yeah, the yeah. Vivian, uh, Vivian is, has a, Sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a, a question to Stefano. Sure. Okay. Are you still are you still active uh, in the billiard community, the three cushion, three carom uh, community? Well, not really. No, no, not really. No, I, I like to play billiards when I can. You know, yeah, and uh, you know, again, you know, I'm, I I had to take a, a, you know forcefully, you know, a, you know, a, a, a period of absence, you know, from pool and uh, you know from any Q sport. But I'm I, I'll be back. To use, uh, you know, what Schwarzenegger used to say, right? right with right. his accent, you know, yeah, with his nice German okay. accent. Yeah, curious. I'll definitely be back. You know, yeah. you know, yeah. You know, billiards is a game that I can really. I love billiards, three cushion billiards. Mm -hmm. You know, you and I, we play I, when Romano. Remember we? Yeah. I ran a nine up there, which was good for. We even played player, in Argentina you know? some. Remember, Mike? Yeah. We played pretty good, you know, but in Argentina. But I, I love, I love billiards. I, I mean, say it. I never did play it when I was young, and and mm -hmm. and the problem is, the United States. I might go for a whole year and not even see a table or stuff, you know. Unfortunately. Over in California, House of Billiards, I love yeah. playing over there. 
And, uh, you know, I start running fives and sixes and stuff every once in a while, but uh, Tom Rossman's a good billiard player. You know, mm-hmm. Tom, uh, mm-hmm. he, he's, he was playing billiards before he was playing pool, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tom and I probably played probably, uh, you know, probably pretty close. We just love the game. You know, Tom, we're like a kid. We get on a billiard table, and uh, mm-hmm. but I love, I love playing billiards, three cushion. Mm-hmm. I played Sammy one, Sammy Segner. Sammy. Now, not the TV thing, but we played once at the trade show. Uh-huh. We were playing a, a 25-point game. Now, listen to this. Now, there's no way I could beat Sammy. There's no way. Sure. But he was telling me what to do. What to do. And I was beating him. He coached him. me, too. <laughs> he yes. was coaching me, and exactly. I was beating him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he we was, ended up with he an was, even score, he but was he tell, was telling me He what was to telling do. me the exactly. shot. I said, what do you do here? And he said, well, just go off this ball. And, this. Oh, and yeah. I was making the shots. You exactly. Know. But Well, of course, you know what you're doing, Mike. I mean, that's No, yeah, but not like, like him. But he, I no, mean, the barrier yeah. players, they know these simple shots that we don't see. Well, for each yeah. shot, they see so many different solutions yeah. to the same yeah. shot. You yeah. know, they see five, six ways to shoot the oh, same yeah. shot. And, and then they ponder so, yeah. which is the safest, you know, and then they want to keep, you know, position, position for the next play. shot. Right, you know. yeah. They control all three right. balls. Yeah, we may see only a couple of solutions, maybe I'm three. Usually, I'm usually just going for the ball, and we get a lot of kisses, too, you know. Oh, yeah, and, uh, exactly. But, uh, but if you <laughs> play it a lot, you know, and... I mean, I know all a lot of the beer players are good friends of mine. I've done shows with them, like Bloom Doll and uh, oh, Roberto uh, Rocas, yeah, uh, Kuhlman, you know, yeah. And uh, but I love to watch the bigger players, the good players play. They just so much control, you know. Oh, Sang Lee, oh, oh they're, man, they're all yeah. great. They're all great in what they do. Yeah, but it's a beautiful game. Now, what we're watching here now? Let's see. Uh, let's oh, see. now it's she's on the hill, right? Still 5-4, oh, 5-4 uh, over there. Still John uh, and Deborah playing. Also table one. Uh, table Ozzie one. Reynolds and Oscar Padilla. Is that this one? Yes. Oh, that now we are. In, uh, That's Ozzy Reynolds shooting right now. Oscar and Ozzy. All, all right. Let's see. Oscar Avila. Oh, there's an interesting fact that uh, a friend was sharing with us saying that Jason Shaw uh, made 227 balls in uh, at a recent DCC Derby City. But Jason did what now? Yeah, he did 227 balls uh, in uh, about an hour, I think. The straight pool challenge. Yeah. Where, where wow. was this at? Uh, it was uh, oh the Derby City friends, you know, yeah. from from home you know telling us that you know that's what happened and I didn't know that you know well thank you for sharing that info you know well, Jason is a, is a Hall very talented there. player Buddy Hall I see his name up there some kind of question <laughs> or something Buddy uh, just a little uh, a little higher than that I think. well I tell you what Buddy did you ever see Buddy play much it's oh yeah, Buddy, oh, Buddy he, yeah oh. we've been friends for many years yeah he played he's, uh, I mean he is cue ball control everything just oh, made yeah. so simple you know uh-huh exactly and effective uh, what do you think about this you know the asian players coping you mean those two brothers are you getting you're familiar with those guys the one the two brothers Copen Yee, Cop, uh, Copen well there's two that came over and played yeah. last year yeah i didn't get to watching that much but it's <laughs> See the thing about Taiwan, they got good sponsors. Is that they're from Taiwan, right? Yes. Not mainly. Yeah, they got good sponsors. If Mr. Two's still involved, I don't know if Mr. Two used to be a really great sponsor over there. And they play on super tight pockets. They practice on, you know, they, all the Poolers got really tight pockets, and they uh, work hard at the game, you know. And and uh, and same with the European play. European players. You know, the pros, they play like they're playing, working out for the Olympics or something. You know, they got all these drills and stuff. And really, for young people, if you want to become a good player, you got to practice by yourself drills. You got to learn drills and stuff. Drills. Practice. That's how you oh, yeah. really get good and you're more relaxed and learning shots. Because when you're playing in a match, you can't experiment. You know, but if you're playing by yourself and try to learn, you know, like simple drill, you know, drills that, that, uh, that, that cover all parts of the game, you know. So if you can come up with a lot of different drills that covers for every part of the game, and then when you get into the game, you just you've shot that that shot so many times, and it comes up in the situation, you know. You know, I have a question for you, both of you. Um, back in the day, you know, you guys competed a lot. 
in artistic billiards. What was the, and you, you had to come up with a lot of those shots yourselves and in order to, you know, sort of uh, raise the bar, so to speak, and evolve. Sure. What was the inspiration behind some of those new shots and what were some of the, you know, the, the most memorable shots for both of you that you've both had to kind of come up with, dig deep and come up with on your own? I know you're famous for the boot shot, Mike. Hey, hey, Maybe, yeah, yeah. you know, you're famous for the boot shot, but what are some of the biggest inspirations and some of the most memorable shots that you guys came up with that, that, uh, that everybody else remembers? Well, I'm going to say something. Stefano and I, are, we're on the same, uh, uh, we think a lot alike on the trick shots. I mean, it's more looking at the artistic billiard program. You see, they got 100 shots, and they're all really pretty difficult shots. So we were more into the, we weren't into the props that much. You know, if you notice when I won and stepped on that, it was more stroke shots. And so there wasn't a lot of props involved, you know, and, and uh and um, we we like doing you know draw shots and mass shots and stuff like that and they get up there and they're making on just two attempts you know that's tough you only, you're trying this real difficult shot it's not like now but you know you're trying a real tough shot and you only got two attempts to make it yep. but then when it brought all the props in and i understand why they did it i'm not criticizing but but it, see i travel a lot and there's no way i could carry all those props around and practice and stuff <laughs> no way. and no and a plus trailer. a pool room to, you can't go in a pool room and practice using all those props sure yeah. so they did that for tv for the people because we were and i agree with with matt braun you know we were doing a lot of the same shots every year you know but we had a my strong suit was the draw shots like the the jimmy moore draw and so on and Stefano was kind of like the same. We were our draw shots and our followers, fuetes and stuff, you know. Right. Because, you know, from the bigger background. And, uh, but what I tried to do was create shots by the ability that I had to make it not necessarily a trick shot, but a, some kind of a type of skill shot that was difficult that I figured I could do that they couldn't do. And, uh, but they didn't want it to be too difficult because you only had two attempts. They wanted to make sure that shots were made. Let me let Stefano talk some on that. Yeah. yeah. Oh well, you know, I think we already talked about that a little while, you know, ago. You know about, you know, that we, you know, personally, I, I disagreed a little bit with, you know, with the, the new shots that were really, you know, not as pure as, as, uh, you know, because trick shots are, are still pool. So, you know, we don't see golfer trick shooters, you know, um, come up with all kinds of stuff on the on the green, you know, all kinds, you know. So, there is, there you know, is um, that you know, well, probably now they, they got inspired by by the happenings in our sport, you know, and they say, well, maybe we can. Uh, well, there, there was some this golfer, there's, some, there's a golfer that travel around. That, yeah. yeah. Now there's some golfers that travel around that do. I mean, they might swing with a 20, 20 foot club or something, you know, and make oh, sure. all yeah, kinds of shots. Oh, they got all kinds about. of shots and stuff and golf, you know, and <laughs> and uh, they got shots. And there's some guys that do that for corporations. Uh, trust, trust you to know about that, Mike. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. There's something about something about Mike. I guess you must have learned on the road all these years. You learned uh, all types of things like like card tricks and uh, well, <laughs> you know. You know, when I first started really doing the exhibitions, uh, actually, when I first started doing the exhibitions, it's it's the same thing I do now. But when I first started, was actually doing trick shots to go to prisons, detention homes, and places to witness about Jesus Christ. I was I was a born again became a born again Christian, and I was a I got off drugs and I was an alcoholic, four packs of cigarettes a day, everything you can think of, and I got delivered. So I started, I got on fire for God, started doing, that's how I got into the trick shots. And then I backslid uh, and lost everything and stuff, you know, and then God, uh, his love and mercy forgave me and, and uh, got, we, we still have a ministry now. We go all over the world. You can look up gospel trick shot ministries. We go all over the world using a poo table to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was in Egypt, I was in Egypt in 2011 in the middle of the desert, using the pool table, telling people about Jesus on live television, and you know, and I love the, you know, I love 
Muslims. I love everybody. I mean, you know, Jesus loves, God loves everybody. I'm a morning Christian. I love everybody. And that's what Steve Littles, Tom Rossman, we go any, anywhere that they have a pool table. We were in a, we spent a month in the Philippines and uh, over there and uh, under Edward. But that's how I got into trick shots was actually to, 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 to give my testimony. Yeah. We have another question. Yeah. Stefano, a couple of interesting questions. Yeah, I see that. What do you, th what do you think about the possibility of seeing uh, pool in the Olympics in 2020? That that came from yeah, Pool I, Skull 805. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I'm I'm pessimistic. I, I don't see that happen. You know, our, our two sports are you know all the federations are are on their own, they really don't want to find a common ground, you know, of cooperation and uh, if they were, it, it would definitely become an Olympic sport because it's, uh, I believe, the second most played sport in the world, pool. It's either the second or the third, you know, after soccer and another one, I believe, you know, or, yeah, so, I mean, it should be in the Olympics, you know, but I, I, I unfortunately, you know, I'm a little... Uh, pessimistic again you know I see how you know they, we can even in pool especially we can even reach some standards you know for the equipment you know which snooker has and uh, and billiards has you know we don't have that you know so right snooker snooker is heavily standardized a little Let's bit about that you know I've, I've done shows for the Olympic Committee mm -hmm. uh, in Russia for Samaranch I did shows in China for we had our actually our banquet at the People's Hall which is equivalent to the White House you know Yep. And and other countries, I believe, are more see it more as a sport than America does. Yes. You know, see that's the thing yes. about it. Our movies I and agree. our stuff. The reason we don't have the sponsors and stuff. Our movie. If you think about all the movies about pool, it's all about hustling and you know gambling, and taking people's money. You know, but other countries, uh, like I was in Russia uh, with Mr. Samranch, president. And I had him done trick shops, and and and. Uh, Jurgen Sandman for many years now they they the WPA has been trying to get pool in the Olympics. It's in the World Games, you know. Yep. And the problem is it if they got pool in, now they got to have this whole different venue, all these you know, they bring, it takes a lot of money. To, you know, I mean it takes money, you know. Golf is an Olympic sport now. Yeah, you know, golf is an Olympic sport, but look at the money they have, you know. But I can see possibly where it could, you know, uh, where it could could make it. You know, I mean, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Well, Mike and Stefano, on the same note, uh, Silky Brown seventy two in the chat room asks, "Where do you see, you know, the future of pool heading in the United States of America? What, what's your just your personal opinion?" Well, you want to start, Mike? Well, you know what? It's amazing. I see some. I see some young. I see some young players playing now that have unbelievable talent. Now I'm not. I'm talking. And when I say young, I'm talking about nine, ten years old, eleven years old. I was thirteen before I ever started playing pool. Back, you know, then you didn't have any real young players. And now you got a lot of young players. So they need to come up with programs like you do in Europe. More programs, I believe, for the young players as a sport. Oh, in a in like schools like Mark. Okay, Mark Wilson. You know Mark Wilson. You know, you know the college there. They put up, they fixed the place with, with four diamond tables and everything. You know, the, uh, at Lindenwood. yeah, Lindenwood yeah. Uh, so Cubs. can you imagine if they had said all the universities and all the, uh, the even the, the high school? I mean, places where they have tables and teaching it as a sport. Uh, you know, and because you know teaching drills and stuff, and you know, and, and I go to some places where they have kids that come out and they do that. And some, like in uh, Sacramento, California, I don't know if they're still doing it, but they, up there they were having classes at hard times or at a school. Yeah, at well, the school they was bringing in, in that hard times. I don't know if they're still doing it now or not. You know. Well, you know, I, I tend to agree. I think the youth is a is a, a key part in the future of pool. Uh, we should definitely invest more in them, but. Um, you know, I, I got to be realistic. I mean, I don't see that happen. Uh, I really don't see good promoters out there for our sport. I, I, I've i seen, you know, uh, uh, interest overall for pool, uh, you know, uh, declining, you know, here in North America, mostly. It's booming in Asia. Um, uh, I'd like to, I'd like to, 
agree with you to a certain extent. I think that uh, in the past 15 years, it has really been on a downward mm -hmm. uh, sort of. Uh, it's been on a, not I wouldn't say downward spiral, <laughs> uh -huh. but it's been on a downtrend. But I think in the last yeah. four, three or four years, mm -hmm. it's been on a little bit of an upswing here in the U.S. Uh, a li lot more enthusiasm for the game. Uh, but but I will agree with you. I still think almost the same level of frustration for s the sports industry, the billiard industry. Yeah. Is that would you guys agree with that? Well, you know what a dream, a vision that I had. I'm serious. This might sound strange. If I was a billionaire, or if I knew, I wish I knew a billionaire that loved pool so much, and we could take a hundred million dollars, say, and open up billiard rooms all across the United States. Listen to this: no smoking, <laughs> no drinking, no gambling, and no music, and, and where people could play pool and just play and get into the game, the eye-hand coordination. Using your brain, using your mind, using your hands to create and do something rather than getting bombarded by all this stuff that's coming into the mind nowadays, you know. You know well, and we have a, a, a huge competition against the, uh, the gaming, the video gaming market. And that's, that's, that's really taking up a lot of the attention of the youth, you know. It's hard now to, to get a kid to just get out of the house and play out in the in the yard. That's right. And you yep. can't you can't you sure. see what happens too is the heart you know, we get away from natural affection and, and things, you know, our heart and uh, our minds are, are so bombarded, you know, with with like the violence on T V and all the the you know, music music is super powerful. Yeah, I agree. yeah I music. music well, I, I write music is super powerful, and you be, better be very careful what kind of music you listen to, you know, and and uh, and what you let get into your spirit, you know, and and uh, and that's uh, that's something that's helped me. I write and sing country and country, go you know, and gospel, and and man, I was out there where I go with my guitar, and it just made. You know, it's it's music is, is so powerful, but both ways though. Yeah, you know. and yeah, you even got a, you get a donation from Mike Brown there. I got a quarter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, but uh, anyway, it, it'd be nice to have pool rooms out there where that you could go and or places and play and you know not uh, worry about all this other stuff, being bombarded, all your mind getting all this other stuff in it. You know. And you could become your who you are, <laughs> you know. Find out who you are and become who you are, you know. Right, Mike. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah, that'd be nice. Well, we we've really this has become a very deep conversation. <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah. And uh, you know, I appreciate you guys' input. It, it's actually it's actually regardless of the fact that there are, this is a great event. This is the 25th annual Andy Mercer tournament. Did you know Andy Mercer at all? Either of you? I did shows for Andy before he passed away when he had the leagues. Yeah, yeah. Did how, how about you, Stefano? Did no, you know? I never had no. the pleasure to meet him. No. Yeah. yeah. He was he was an active uh, promoter of pool. He started the Southern Nevada uh, Nine Ball Taverns Association uh -huh. here in Las Vegas, which is still yeah. going strong. I, think, uh, I might have played in like first or second one. I don't know. It seemed, it seemed like I did. I don't know. But Andy, no, Andy, I did shows he had at his banquets and stuff, you know, 20, 30 years ago, maybe. You know. Yeah. yeah. I remember a funny story is my ex-wife, my first wife, they had a band that was playing uh, Rocky Top or something like that. And I think that dancing and, and she, it, it was, uh, I'm not going to tell it. No, I won't tell it. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about it, Mike. That's it. No, that's it. <laughs> hey, uh, you guys, you guys know. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> you guys know Donnie Branson, right? Donnie Branson, very talented player. Where is he playing at? He's right now in a match with. Oh, he's playing Branson. George Arbia, and it's a one-zero in this race to six. Donnie. It's the uh, back table over here. Mm -hmm. It's a hard. It's a hard one to see. I thought you might know Donnie Branson, but he's a very talented player. And Ozzy Reynolds playing Oscar Avila. Mm -hmm. 
That's right. We've also got Joe Corpus and Dave DeTillo are playing on the other, on table four, which we've taken the camera away from to cover you guys. And we've also got Edgar Jackson playing Grant Gilbert. I've known Dave for uh, 30, I did shows for Dave over 30 years ago. He had the Garfield Inn in, uh, in uh, California. He had a place for like 12 years. Had a I, I played on a team with Dave DeTillo. I know him from Southern California. He's probably a better eight ball player than he is nine ball player on bar table, you know. But he's not, yeah, he, but I've known, uh, yeah, I've known Dave for a long time. And uh, his partner was Jim, I forget Jim's last name. But they had a place for about 12 years there in Garfield, called a Garfield Inn. Yeah. Stefano, you're still living here in Las Vegas? Yes. Where, where do you play normally? So that if I play out of Pool Sharks. You play out of Pool Sharks? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Dave. Mike. Thanks, yeah. thanks Mike. Mike's going to... I'm going to be around the whole tournament. You know, so. That's right. Mike Massey. Hey, congratulations. You beat Shane Van Boning, 6'5". Uh, That's quite an accomplishment. And, you know, you're heavily favored now. Well, I, I don't know about that, but I know I got Scott Frost who's playing really good on the bar tables now. He is, he is. He's actually uh, working very hard this year. He says he wants to get a pick for the Moscone Cup. He wants to get on the cup. Well, you know, yeah, yeah. And then if he does really good there at the, at the U.S. Open 8 ball and also the 10 ball. In, Coming up. Yeah, that's, that's going to be Moscone Cup points. And... Uh, wouldn't it be nice for me to get in there and win a cup and get back on the Moscone Cup? I hadn't played. I played in two. Oh, wow. Wow, that would be amazing. Maybe get you in as a captain. Uh, uh, yeah, they, well, I, I don't know. I, it, it, but I don't know if I'd have time to spend, spend on it. But I'd rather be on there as a player. <laughs> yeah. Well. Thanks again, Mike. Thanks a lot. And Daniel, I'm afraid I'm going to have to go myself, you know, also. You know, if you don't mind. You know, it's been... Uh, a great experience here with you and uh, I want to thank you again for this opportunity and uh, thank all the, the folks that are following us on um, on the internet. And, uh, Absolutely. Uh, I, I know that this has all been very a little impromptu and somewhat improvised. That's the beauty of it. You know, I, I love it. You know, yeah. But then I have uh, also some previous engagements, so I'm going to have to hit the road again. And, uh, you know, but it's been nice to see you. Thank you so much. You know, I may stop by tomorrow, you know, and. Uh, That'd be lovely. And we'd love to have you. And maybe maybe we'll just sit down and actually commentate a, a real match. Sure. Just oh, yeah. not talk about all the other. Oh, other yeah. Oh, we, we, we talked about us, you know, way too long. I think, you know, <laughs> that the crowd, have, you know. Let them time. enjoy. Thank let them know. enjoy some of the matches. Some yes, of the action. Yes, definitely, yeah. Some great matches coming up, you know, folks. Okay. Yeah. You take care. Okay. Thank Stefano, you. thank you very much. Bye -bye. Thank you. All right. Stefano Palinga and Mike Massey. Truly a pleasure to have those guys with us. We now bring you back to our regularly scheduled programming.